All right, so there's a pretty big shakeup in the meta in the turtle pack on the test server because a lot of the food meta stuff got nerfed, including squirrel, seal, and cat, and they are pretty significant. Squirrel no longer adds an extra discounted food slot, and seal now gives only attack to plus three friends, or like plus one attack to three friends. Cat also has trigger limits, but I don't think that is too much of an issue because you don't really use it three times too frequently anyway. I guess it kind of impacts like the cat cow strat. But the big ones are the nerfs to squirrel and seal. So they went from being very good and just like the main scalers, the quickest way to scale. So now, like, are they still kind of okay? Maybe. I think the main issue is you only get attack. So you kind of need a rabbit in order to counteract the seal. But what I found is that if you go rabbit, you really just get a ton of HP on the seal. And then the other things don't really get a ton of HP. So it's a little bit actually hard to get like even stats. But another big change was Worm. So Worm is no longer a self-scaler. It now gives you a discounted apple at the start of every turn for two gold. But you can actually pair this with Squirrel and it works out pretty well as long as the attack is right. So the Worm has to have higher attack and then it will spawn the apple and then the Squirrel will give it a discount. And that works out pretty well, especially with Seal. That way you just immediately get to buy something on Seal every turn. Um, and yeah, it can work out pretty well. So I think Worm is going to be a great part of the food build. So ideally we're going for Worm, Rabbit, Squirrel, Seal, and Cat maybe. That's like five different food meta builds, or five different food synergies. But they are all going to be what I want. So starting out with the Worm, and I don't know if a two gold apple is really worth it at this point, but I guess I can just take it. And then rolling into a whole bunch more Worms, so when you level up the worm, it now gives like a better apple, which is really just a pair. It's plus two, plus two, but it still counts as an apple in case you want to feed it to Jeroboa. I guess that's the only reason. But now I'll have three discounted apples, but they're really not worth it. I mean, I guess like a discounted pair is definitely worth it at this point. But two gold apples, I don't think are worth it at turn five anymore. Luckily, there's a rabbit, so that can actually change things. Just that plus one extra stat can actually make a difference here. So now time to probably just feed worm unless I get squirrel. That's also perfect. So I could either feed squirrel or worm. Just have to make sure worm has slightly higher attack. But my, might be nice to spread out the buffs a little bit. So yeah, is this actually the meta? I don't really think so. I think uh, monkey is probably one of the better scalers. I mean, cat and monkey I think are the two best in the pack right now. And you can kind of go with like dragon scaling maybe if you want to. If you really high roll it. And then there's like penguin scaling, which maybe not amazing, but uh, maybe like slightly playable. But this is definitely not as OP as it once was. It is much more reasonable now. And I think in order to actually like be super ahead of everyone, you have to really high roll like the perfect food build, which is maybe how it should be anyway. Um, because like the previous time, it just felt so insane. And if you actually got the food build, you just like crushed everyone. And now... Not really the case, but Squirrel not giving an extra food slot, I feel like has made such a noticeable difference. I didn't realize, I guess it's like 50% less foods, but it really went from being like an S tier, which was a controversial opinion when I put it on like the S part of the tier list. But I did think Squirrel was just generally a really amazing unit. And now it is pretty like average. I think there's a lot of situations where I'm just not going to take it anymore. And unless if you actually have the food build already set up, I might just never take it. But there's the early seal. So you can see why this is the run that I specifically chose. Because I got early squirrel and early seal. Plus I found a worm on turn 3 and a rabbit on turn 5. So pretty much everything went absolutely perfect in order to actually get this food build going. And now I have level 2 worm. So I'm getting a discounted, uh, so pretty much a 1 gold pair every turn. And then those are perfect freezes. So the issue with seal giving all attack is that... I mean, if you go with, like, Melon later on, you can just get one shot through Melon. I've had plenty of runs where that actually ends up happening, and it's quite an issue, because you only have, like, 10 HP. And you'd think that the Rabbit would help out a lot, but if you're just feeding Seal with these pears and apples, then nothing else is going to get HP. You have to buy, like, salads, sushis, or pizzas in order to give the other things HP, and it's just, it just doesn't work out super amazing. But Buy, Sell, Mice is actually probably worth it, since it's really a two gold apple, but it's bought on seal, which gives an extra three stats. So you can think about it as, uh, well, how many stats is that? Three plus two is five stats. That's like slightly better than a pair, I suppose. But it's also only two gold, so 
feels pretty worth it. And got to make sure that, I guess, with Squirrel, now you actually spend your gold rolling for good foods. Otherwise, it's mostly going to be useless because you can only get those two things, and it's pretty RNG. But there's a cow. Cow is still going to be really nice. But again, it's so HP-focused. You can see the seal is getting out of control already, and it's going to be even more so once I get the cow stats on there. It's going to be plus one, plus three twice, so extra six HP. I could maybe keep the cow on board if I really wanted to, but not going to do that. I think uh, maybe I want to have room for like a turtle or something, and pears are going to be worth a freeze. Normally, I would really like to go for level two seal, but I don't know if that's really that necessary anymore. Maybe I just keep feeding level one seal and try to just scale with that. But a good amount of attack is also quite nice. It's not very nice against a summon team. Luckily, the seal is going to be able to still carry, but if there's a really strong summon team, also I played against Wade, who I recognize from the team tour tournament, which is always interesting to run into. I guess a lot of familiar names when you're playing on the test server, just a much smaller player base in general. But um, I guess splash attack is actually going to be perfect on the seal. This seal is so big by turn 10. I mean, look at that. Just... 44 HP is pretty crazy. And now it's time for double worm. I mean, again, it's just a one gold apple, so going to be super worth it to just have as many worms on board here. And, yeah, the nice thing about having high attack is, I guess, like, usually those things trade, and then we just let the seal kind of go in the third spot and uh, kill everything else on the team, except that the front units did not actually kill the big worm there, so kind of unfortunate. Normally it feels like it should work, though. And I don't know if level 2 rabbit's really worth it at this point, but I desperately need more HP. I could even consider just buying another rabbit there just because I need the HP so badly, even if the stats get wasted and slightly worse odds to hit seal. But the seal is going to hit 50 HP. And then, like, what do I do from that point? Is it even worth it to continue feeding seal? Because it feels like a lot of wasted stats. And I don't know if I care more about giving HP to things like worm and stuff. It does have 21, which is a pretty decent amount compared to my previous runs where it was much lower than that and so maybe it could survive through melon but the seal is just going to clear through teams and i mean it looks like a very strong team for a turn 12 for sure stake i think that's a, a safe bet because if i don't want to risk getting one shot through melon i mean stake is probably going to help out quite a bit especially since like i have so much attack that i could maybe one shot through their melon with the stake and so that might just be the superior equipment that i want anyway all right, so now I don't think it's worth it to feed seal. It's only level one seal, and I have a level two rabbit, so this is getting just so much HP. So I think that was a generally good move. Kind of weird to not feed the seal anymore, but I think it is definitely what you want to do. Just going to end on a mammoth, and yeah, very good food build. Can it actually carry me to win? The only issue here is absolutely zero in-game abilities. But as long as I have high enough stats, I guess that won't matter. And as long as I don't go too late I, in, like, the game, it probably won't matter either. But uh, did not get a pill or anything. Um, so I guess we'll just go ahead and sell that guy. And then another stake. I could stake the worm or I could stake the squirrel. And I guess I'm going to still feed the seal. It gives plus two attack and then it gives plus three I don't really know if that was worth it, but now the worm has enough HP where it's definitely surviving through melon once you reach that 31 HP, of course. And yeah, just kind of running a four squad, freeze that, maybe get level three worm next turn, get to see the best apple, it gives plus three, plus three, it's a chicken leg. Who knew that apples and chicken legs, apparently they're equivalent. This is like something you probably wouldn't be taught in health class, but you know what? A best apple is pretty much the same thing as a chicken leg. So that's a fun fact for your diet right there. And, alright, so do we melon the seal? Slash attack is really nice on it, but I guess we don't want to get it one shot, so I'm going to go ahead and take that, plus get the extra stats. There's the level 3, and there's the cat, which is a bit late on turn 14, but you know what? It still could be helpful, and I guess we're freezing this one gold apple that's going to be free next turn, and I'm going to get another one anyway. So, looks pretty good. Just overall really solid stats, and most of the time, since it's harder to scale to 50-50s nowadays, I think you can just win with pure stats. You don't actually need any abilities, but a pretty strong team, Tiger, Snake, but not going to be able to get past the seal, and there we go. So is it viable? Only if you high roll, I think. This was a super high roll, and it shows that I have amazing stats, but if you don't high roll it, you can't really just force it and win every time. So that's my opinion, at least. Anyway, thanks for watching. See ya.